I, I grow, I grow in Jamaica. I went to school in Jamaica. I studied my law finals in Jamaica. I've only ever worked in Jamaica. And the truth of the matter is that my parents were also servants to the people. My father came to Jamaica from the UK in 1953, and he never left. He established the Mona Rehab Center, which is now named after him after his death in 1996, which is the only facility of its kind in the English-speaking Caribbean for persons with disabilities. My wife and my you them. My wife is a beautiful empress. Me and my brother Natty, a par and you know, Mr. Tuna, he knew her. He knew her first actually, and she and a friend, and we said we are going on a date. And, we, and then they say, all right, then we'll come with you, you know? Yeah. And we end up at turntable club off the Red Hills Road, yeah. 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 And I want to tell you, we see her the kind of life, although she was really more with him and me with the next one, I really, she made the life. So, so happened, it happened that, that night, the mother had a dance competition. And we see her move and we say, yeah, she can dance good enough. So, me, me never re, me didn't really rate myself as a dancer. <laughs> but we said, I go and try to do a thing. But most of the people in there were kind of of the old, you know, it wasn't, yeah. So, me and her dance and we end up a winner prize. Yeah. Dinner for two at Paul's 104 on Harbor Street. Yeah. So, we said, all right. <laughs> and we, a couple of weeks later now, me and she go down there and we had our lunch and thing and one thing lead to another, you know? And here we are, you know? So, yeah. And you know, we have three beautiful kids and... Yeah, so... You don't really feel like I have to feel any way about who I am. A person who choose who they are, you know? You're born to who you are, right? What you, what you choose is how you live your life. Right? The choice is how you make in life. Mark Golin telling us a little about himself. Telling us a little story about himself and how him meet him wife. Now I am going to play Andrew Wallace telling us his story growing up. Before we kick off the report, check this out. I was born in Spanish town. Grew up at 56 Summer Land Road. In a board house, banded room. Grew up with my great grandmother. Single parent house. Rose Chimney. Go out of school. Sit up in a classroom with 60 people and listen. But I don't believe that I must use poverty as an excuse. My God. I was born in a two bedroom board house. What? At 56 Cumberland Road in a Spanish town just down the road from the grass yard market. My father is still a farmer and my mother is a retired civil servant. Damn! What did you say? The two of us, me and my sister, never you your sister, and a civil servant salary. Civil servant. I never born with no gold spoon in my mouth. Yeah. I know what it is to go to school and I have no lunch money. I've always said to people, do not trust the words of politicians. So that was a little snippet of our two leaders, both the opposition leader and the Prime Minister for the Jamaican Labour Party. So, I want to tell me, want to think about both leaders' speech. I want to believe more. But I know that we come to talk about. All in this two-term administration sets record for scandalous top-level resignation and dismissal. On the Yawagwan people, bless up to my viewers and my subscribers. I hope everybody have been a blessed and a wonderful day. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, remember, in everything you do, always put God first 
in every or uh, any situation. Just always remember to call upon God. Always remember to pray. Because a prayer day keep the devil away. Now, my viewers and my subscribers, we have a lot coming up inside this update. So you definitely don't want to miss this update, people. This one is very interesting. So before we go into the update, people, leave a like on this video. Give this video a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet. And turn on the post notification bell for new content. All right? We're soon forward, people. So welcome back to my viewers and my subscribers. Big up to all of my viewers. Big up to all of my subscribers. We continually support the channel and I help the channel to grow. Now people, remember to leave a like on this video. Remember, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you are new viewers first time on my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification bell. So whenever we drop new content, you will be first to be notified. And people, we are almost at... 86,000 subscribers. We just want a few more to be 86. So people, subscribe if you haven't subscribed as yet. And turn on the post notification bell for new content. Alright? Now my viewers and my subscribers, today is Sunday. But there is a lot cooking up and bubble up, bubbling up inside this Sunday, people. You understand? Now, it is said that Andrew Wellness, um, two term in a power. Is the most scandalous time ever in a Jamaican politics. The most scandalous, the most corruption, the most corrupted time ever in the history of Jamaican politics. Just two terms. Just two terms. Now, people, we are going to jump straight into the report. And we have an answer from Andrew Wallace as well because he answer to it. But we could drop into the report, people. So then put it in the Jamaican Gleaner and them say, History will credit Prime Minister Andrew Wallace for a number of achievements, among them having the lowest level of unemployment in Jamaica in 40 years, reducing the debts to GDP ratio in the last eight years, and presenting the most no tax budget. Over the same period, that same history, according to political scientist Dr. Paul Buren, will also note that he has presided over two administrations since 2016 that have seen a record number of senior members at the center of high-profile scandal that led to a record eight top officials of his government being either fired, reshuffled, or forced to resign under a cloud. Cha-cha. On the year one, people. On the year one, on the year of Andrew Olness administration, I go on. and when we talk about corruption, people say we don't know nothing about corruption. On the year, what they go on, people? Now, make we continue. So we are going to start off the scandal with Robert Montague following six years of turbulence during the JLP terms in office, which led to him being reshuffled numerous times due to saga involving the portfolio under his management. Montague resigned from the cabinet in 2022. That a one. Flight Green. Flight Green presence at the event during the Big C lockdown in 2021 is undoing. He resigned as an agriculture and a fishery minister. But 2022, he was back at the wheel again of revamped minister. So the corrupted minister come back at a different post. But make we continue. Andrew Wheatley, in 2018, the Holiness administration was forced with the resignation of the then science and technology minister, Dr. Wheatley, over reports of nepotism and coronism and corruption at Petrojam and National Energy Solution Limited. Rural Reed. In March 2019, the then Jamaican College Principal and Education Minister, Rural Reed, was gone from the cabinet following reports from corruption and misuse of public funds and education ministry and the Caribbean 
Maritime University. Everybody's supposed to know about that one day. Marisa Darempro Philibert. She resigned as Speaker of the House and a Member of Parliament for Chilani South following a damning Integrity Commission report. Now, with the all the way over to Mumalashi, Evral Wamintan, last month he became the JLP 8th senior casualty as he was forced to resign from the cabinet following public utterance about his intention to withhold public funds from opposition People's National Party councillor in the St. Catherine Southwestern constituency who was victorious in the local government election. Now we are over to Carl Samuda. In 2017, the then Office of the Contractor General initiated an investigation into the alleged impropriety in the award of contracts, the issuance of license and the implementation of projects by the Jamaican Diary Development Board. J.C. Hutchinson was stripped of his duty as minister with responsibility for agriculture in the Ministry of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fishery in 2020 aimed a conflict of interest claim in the Allen Estate land deal. So after that came out from the Jamaican Gleaner, Prime Minister Andrew Wallace make a post and this is what he said. The Jamaican Labour Party and the PNP have never held to the same standards. People's, people always expect better from us. And we have no problem rising to the occasion. That is why swift action is always taken. The same cannot be said about the other side. But memories are short. And many young and even old Jamaican seems to have forgotten certain sins. Especially when the other side is acting like they are fresh out of the plastic wrapping. So I must say, the other side behave like I say. Them no mix up in a corruption and all of that. And uh, why much have you say the type of corruption where the other side have been held for, fame side, no held for the same type of corruption. But according to the report, for the last couple of years, for the last two terms, he have faced the most corruption in the history of politics. So I know. Now, Speaking about corruption, Mark Golin make a, a, a post and uh, basically him a pressure Andrew Wallace and him say the people him still want to know who are the six criminals where they in a parliament sit among us. Mark Golin then post a video after he made that post calling out Andrew Wallace to at least announce the six criminals before the general election. And this is what he said people. Minister, I have called on the Jamaica Labour Party to tell the people who are those persons, who are these people in the parliament who are under investigation for the serious crime of the disappointment. Silence. They put a gag order on their own cabinet, forbidding them to talk about integrity commission issues. They have something to hide clearly. Only people have something to hide behaving that way. How can we have a, a situation in this country where the, the, the annual declaration of assets and liabilities and income of the Prime Minister cannot be certified by the Integrity Commission for two years? How can that be? The Prime Minister has not spoken to the people and explained what is the problem, why his declarations can't be certified. I think he said he doesn't know. How can that be when he's in dialogue with the Integrity Commission about those issues? Jamaica needs a government that the people can have trust and confidence in. A government that isn't here to take the people's resources and give it to them friends and them cronies. A government that will lead with integrity. A government that isn't here to scream. And I can assure you and the Jamaican people that the next People's National Party government will be a government that plays by the rules that ensures that the resources of the people are used only for the benefit of the people and that the people
you got your name and have trust and confidence in it because we're not here to take what is not ours but is yours. So as you can hear people, Mark Golden a call out and Jules and the six criminals them where they in a parliament and me can guarantee you, you know, I can guarantee you say is either Andrew Wallace in the six or his wife the in the six. Or maybe the whole I member them on him team in the six, including him and his wife. You understand what I say? But there must be a reason why he is afraid to announce those uh, six criminals. And there must be a reason why the Prime Minister is afraid to declare his asset as well. Why him have a hide? As what Mark Golden would say, why him have a hide? You understand me? I say, but people stay to thought and that down below in the comment section. And as usual, people, remember to leave a like on this video. Alright? Now, after Mark Golden made that post, Mark Golden went on to make another post. This time, it is Dayton Campbell speaking. Now, people, check out this post right now, people. Comrades, chairman. And comrades, I just received a text message on my phone, a WhatsApp, from the police. They tell me that they've had to close the side doors because the comrades are here in their hundreds of thousands. It is good to see the PNP back up and running. Turn up the thing. Turn up the thing. But comrades, they are trying to say that there is no difference between the PNP and that other party. And it is a lie from the pit of hell because we are not the same. We are not the same because this political party does not allow any foreign government to tell us who our friends should be. We determine who we are friends with based on their relationship with us. And so we welcome our visiting friends here today because the PNP is a regional and an international organization. Turn up the thing. Turn up the thing. We are not the same because the PNP does not offer loans to students when bombs are dropping and people are dying. The PNP send money to bring them home. We are not the same. We are not the same because the PNP don't collect head stocks from you and don't buy insurance so you have high all prices. The PNP put insurance in place to protect you against high all prices. And Camille will tell you that St. Vincent has taken on that policy and they have the lowest gas price in the region. We are not the same. We are not the same because we don't have a leader who run around from constituency to constituency opening one dege 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 house. We open housing schemes. We build communities. We are for the people. We are not the same because we don't have a leader who think that he must come and we are close and call himself bro devil or bro whatever. We have a leader who has substance, who has character, who has clean heart and clean heart is pure in spirit. Comrades, we are not the same. We are a progressive party. We are the people's national party. The world is love. Me no know if you see what they go on, you know. But the campaign start for the general election already. The campaign for the general election already start. But why are they starting campaign for the general election when them still cannot announce the six criminals? That is what I would like to know. Now people, me know say everybody and their mother want to know who are the six criminals. We sit down in a parliament and a name taxpayers money and a thief taxpayers money. Me know say everybody and their mother still want to know when Andrew Wallace are going to declare him asset. But this question still remain. But people, stay to thought and that down below in the comment section. 
all right now i'm gonna leave you with this video about the whole needs id business greetings from action now ja greetings to my followers greetings jamaicans at home and abroad it's that time again let me get into it you know one of the things i dislike about the prime minister of jamaica is the fact that he is tone deaf to the voices of the people is tone deaf to the cries of the masses of the people there is an obstruction there is this reluctance to address our concerns and our issues at the grassroots level. But there is this enthusiasm and this zeal to promote anything else that will not improve our lives. Right? I don't know about you, but I obstruct to the needs. I obstruct to it. And this is the reason for my obstruction. We are not at that level yet. If we should go digital, we are not at that stage yet. We have to address education. We have to address health care. We have to address infrastructure. We have to address our judicial system. We have to address our political system. We are not there yet. And I'm not seeing where needs will help to address these challenges that we have in, this, in these various institutions. You want us to be digital in our thinking when we can hardly be critical in our thinking. You can hardly find a, a, a group of critical thinkers in Jamaica. We are illiterate for the most part. And that is why we are so easily manipulated and taken for fools by politicians. We are, not at the, we are not at the level where we can understand things properly. But well, you want us to be digital in our thinking when we can't, when, when we are so violent. We can't, we can't resolve our conflicts amicably without violence. Man don't know if we properly relate to woman. Woman don't know if we properly to relate to man. Vice versa. Parents don't know if we properly relate to them. Children, children don't know if we properly relate to them. Parents, and we have these domestic issues, so much social issues. Not to mention the the, 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 the circus politics that we we practice and endorse in this country. Are you talking about needs? But Jamaican people, be careful of social engineering. Andrew Onis know that needs will not work. Will not work. He knows this. But he has to come and make the utterances so that we get acclimatized to it. So when when it when, when the time is right, it, it 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 is you know surreptitiously um you know segue into our society. Uh uh I object to needs. Not to mention that some years ago the, 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 the Supreme Court struck out needs that it is unconstitutional, it breaches privacy, things that are enforced. In the constitution, it violates it. But again, we have a nosy prime minister. We have a nosy prime minister. There is this race for transhumanism and artificial intelligence and blockchain technology and the whole, you know, cyborging of mankind, of humankind. And he, as nosy as he is, he wants to be in everything. And he's not listening to the cries of the people. We need to improve access to education so that our children will be able to go to school, whether their parents is rich or poor. We need to improve the healthcare system to ensure that poor Jamaican people have access to world-class healthcare, whether, whether they are rich or they are poor. We need to um, eliminate the judicial challenges where poor people cannot get access to, 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 to just justice to equal rights and justice without having this bag of money or without going to the privy council will need to improve the bad roads that floods our country and the many communities that are without water 
and the farmers down in St. Elizabeth, the bread par, the bread, the bread basket of our country that don't have proper irrigation to run their farm, will needs improve that. Will needs address the high cost of living that we are facing as a people. Inflation is killing us. High cost of living is killing us. Food prices is killing us. Can't afford gas, electricity. Will needs improve. Will needs make these things easy for us as a people. I'm not seeing the connection. I'm seeing the, the, the race to be digital. But then we still have the problems that is festering in our country. That is driving us mad. And that is why we act mad and behave mad. Leaders are crazy. The people are crazy. We have to rethink this. But again... I think Andrew Ones and his administration should hold a back seat with this needs thing. We are not at that level yet. We have not reached a stage yet. We are, we are, we are, we are far, far, far from that. Oh, we the, 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 the people them when 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 a literate when not when a numerate. Well, them are gonna function in a digital world. You, you don't even want to educate the, the, the people them through normal educational processes are about normal things, basic things. So how them have a function in a digital society when they can't even function normal in a normal social or sociable society? <laughs> I think that needs thing should be put in the cave, you know. But let, it, let it rest somewhere. Probably put in a file 13 for now. Until we can figure our way through these other challenges that we have before we reach, before we reach to that level day. Big up on ourselves.